Nitesh Kuldeep, who's the senior program lead, Council on Energy, Environment and Water, and Nikhil Nigania of Bernstein join us now to talk about, uh, you know, how realistic, how viable uh, this project is. Uh, Neeraj, let me start with you, right? What are the thoughts on the PM Surya Ghar Yojana? And also, um, while clean energy targets are quite commendable by the government, thermal energy is also here to stay. So how do you manage that kind of ambition uh, going forward? Right. Uh, thank you, first of all, for inviting me here. Uh, as we uh, know that the solar energy ambitions were really started in 2014, and we have come a long way, but uh, rooftop solar sector wasn't uh, picking up uh, well over these last uh, 10 years. And PM Suryagari scheme is uh, you know, now trying to provide the necessary impetus that is needed to really scale up the kind of success we have seen in the utility scale solar, the large scale solar, we want to replicate that for rooftop solar as well and have almost 10x growth in next uh, three years, right? Um, and to respond to your second question, you know, India is rapidly urbanizing and the economy is growing. And along with that, the energy consumption in the households is also uh, rapidly uh, expanding. Right, the people are installing ACs, they are buying EVs. So how do we substitute this new demand that will emerge from the residential or household sectors? That's where the rooftop solar will play an integral role. So uh, it may not be directly helping us substitute, but uh, you know, indirectly by substituting the new energy demand uh, that is likely to come up uh, in the next decade or two decades, uh, will be uh, can be powered through uh, rooftop solar installation. So again, even from the uh, perspective of uh, reducing dependence on coal, uh, solar rooftop solar in the residential sector is likely to be uh, quite crucial. And uh, in, in that sense, it brings the scheme is at the right time and uh, you know with the multiple uh, benefits that it uh, outlines in the medium to long term. Yeah. So, is it fair to assume that we have enough internal resources in order to meet this growing power demand, Neeraj? Right. Uh, so, you know, so far in India, the energy demand is growing about, uh, you know, 5 to 6 percent annually after the pandemic. And India has been able to uh, meet the energy demand. And if the question is around whether we will have enough domestic manufacturing, uh, to produce uh, 30 gigawatt of solar, the target that has been set uh, for PM Suryagari scheme, uh, that again uh, is in the pipeline uh, as part of the PLI schemes. A lot of um, domestic manufacturing is uh, coming up and actually it will be much more than uh, well, what we could consume. So uh, the PM Suryagari scheme will actually facilitate uh, increased domestic demand to support the, the manufacturing. Gentlemen, morning. Uh, Nikhil, uh, not that it can't happen first here, but uh, has this uh, has this happened? Has this sort of been uh, done anywhere else in the world? Rooftops at a, at a, at a country uh, scale? So if you look at China, for example, uh, the mm. quantum China added last year was much more than even the utility scale solar that we had in India. So uh, China has done this at a massive scale. Uh, so we could do this as well. I think it's a noble aspiration to have. Uh, but we'll have to clear some roadblocks in the way. For example, net metering is something which would be critical for this scheme to get implemented. Uh, because uh, for households, a big count of energy consumption happens in the non-solar hours, which is the evening hours when you turn on the air conditioners, for example. So we'll have to implement schemes like those as well in sync with this uh, to ensure the success of this. But yeah, to your question, it has been done uh, at this bigger scale uh, in, in some other countries. Yeah. This net metering, I mean, we have that in some, uh, in, in some parts, right? I mean, I think Delhi has this, right? Uh, Nikhil? Yeah, so it's a state subject. So some yeah. states have have it, some states have not implemented in the full way. So that is something that needs to be seamless uh, for this scheme to uh, be successful. All right. Uh, hi, Nikhil. Good morning and welcome to the show. Nigel on this side. You know, some companies are not very keen on adding thermal capacity. In that sort of a backdrop, would you, you know, prefer generate, uh, generation companies or transmission companies or maybe smart meters as well? Uh, would that the, be the way to play it? Who would be the key beneficiaries? So power sector, if you talk about comprehensively, uh, see even for uh, what the statement which came out yesterday, the bigger goal is to re reduce energy import dependence. 
And power sector, if you talk broadly, there are two big themes uh, which are playing out uh, in India and actually most part of the world. Uh, so the one big theme is the transmission capex. Uh, so in most parts of the world, whether it be US, Europe, and India, incrementally we think as well, uh, transmission will become, a, the grid will start becoming a bottleneck. Uh, so one will need to do a lot of capex uh, to build up the grid uh, where the beneficiaries are transformer, uh, transform manufacturing companies, for example, or even the installers like Power Grid uh, who own and develop those assets. Uh, the second big theme is the evening shortage theme. So now as schemes like this, like rooftop solar support the afternoon supply of power, we still need power in the evening time. And to your question, yes, that, that's where thermal power companies also come in. Uh, so as your CAPEX cycle uh, spread across uh, A, this theme of transmission CAPEX, and B, on the generation side, both energy transition and conventional generation, like coal-based generation, will be needed in India uh, going forward. So, okay. Uh, I wanted to, both of you to comment on this, uh, you know, Nikhil as well as Neeraj. Uh, so, Neeraj, I'll go with you first on EVs, right? Of course, this is a theme, EV adoption is a big theme globally, not just in India. But now there are certain issues cropping up because of the perhaps EV capital costs are rising on account of, you know, lower prices, that EV, uh, price points at which EVs are selling now. There, are, there is poor visibility on government policies as well and there is a shortage of, say, rapid charging stations. Uh, it seems to be a global issue, not just in India, but particularly for India, Neeraj, what more do you think needs to be done in EV adoption from uh, on the power side? Right. So on the EV adoption, uh, you know, if we look at the adoption trends, it's happening in the large commercial vehicles for the public transport, the buses, and uh, they are there. And, uh, you know, dedicated charging ports have been established in conversation with the electricity utilities across states. But if we look at from the consumer's perspective, a lot of uh, adoption or significant adoption is happening in the two-wheeler segment, right? These two-wheelers uh, are being charged at uh, household level. And there are, uh, you know, policy certainties that are needed uh, on one side uh, in terms of whether the consumers will have to pay a different tariff to charge these uh, electric vehicles or whether they can uh, you know, still avail the cross subsidy that they get as part of the uh, electricity for residential sector. Uh, along with that, uh, we also need to look at uh, the infrastructure requirement. So a lot of uh, you know, the charging infrastructure has to come in place, uh, but more than you know, building this charging infrastructure, we also need to energize G these uh, charging infrastructure, which is what will pose the challenge going forward. As Nikhil was mentioning, a lot of investment also has to happen in the uh, distribution uh, infrastructure because, you know, uh, along with the EVs, there comes the unpredictability when these uh, individuals are going to charge their vehicles. The moment they plug in their EVs into the grid, yes. suddenly there will be a spike uh, in the right. power demand. So how do we manage that yes. and whether we have the uh, infrastructure there? So that's something, uh, you know, we will have to... Uh, solve yep. as the EV adoption is going. All yeah. right. All right, gentlemen, appreciate you joining in. We look forward to having a longer chat with you all as the elections uh, do approach. Thanks a lot for that.